Let's talk about compilation, linking, the assembler, uh, object files, etc. So here we have a diagram that illustrates the process of compiling and linking multiple source files to produce an executable file. And it's a standard process in system programming. We're going to walk through the step-by-step -step, uh, explanation of this diagram, starting from the source files, source file one, two, and three. And these are the high-level code written in a programming language such as C, C++, or assembly. And each source file contains code that needs to be compiled. In the second phase here, we have the assembler for these three source files. And for each of these source files, the assembler converts the human readable source code into machine code, which produces object files, one, two, and three. And the assembler is a key part of the compilation process and handles the translation of assembly language into machine code. And this step might involve using a compiler instead of an assembler for uh, higher level source files. For example, source files written in C or C++ as opposed to assembly. And you can see that the output is indicated here, which is the corresponding object files, one, two, and three, for source files one, two, and three. And this contains the machine code but is not yet complete programs. And the reason for that is because these object files represent compiled versions of the source files, but not necessarily fully linked versions. And we'll get to that in the linker component. So these object files are intermediate machine code files that are generated after compiling or assembling the source files. And these files typically have the extension of .o or .obj, and while each object file contains compiled code, it might not be able to run on its own because it can depend on other object files or external libraries. And this is where the linker comes in. So the linker takes all of the generated object files and combines them into a single executable file. So this is where the code from different source files is combined and references between them, such as function calls, are resolved. The linker ensures that all the dependencies, the symbols, and addresses are properly handled. You can see that we have a program library as well uh, in this blue box, and this is a collection of pre-compiled code, such as functions or modules, that can be reused across different programs. And the linker can use libraries to resolve symbols and functions that are called in the source files but are not defined within them. For example, standard libraries such as libc in C or C++. And the library provides additional machine code that the linker integrates into the executable, allowing the programs to make use of common functions without needing to recompile them. As I mentioned, the program library is composed of pre-compiled code, including functions and modules. And finally, we have the executable file. So after linking, the final output is the executable. And this is a binary file that can be run directly by the system. It contains all the machine code, including contributions from both the object files and the program libraries. And the operating system can load this file into memory. So it's the OS can load this executable binary into memory and actually execute it. So let's give a quick summary of this whole end-to-end -end process. We have source files, which are compiled into object files by the assembler or the compiler for higher level languages. And then the linker combines the object files and any external program libraries into a single executable file that can be run by the OS or the system. And this is a standard process in compiled languages, so not interpreted languages like Python, where the program undergoes multiple different stages of translation before it becomes executable.